my name is Yula and you are watching You Multiculturals Community Hour. In this segment, we are talking about civic issues in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Today, we are going to discuss engaging youth in Canada's democracy and how to make their voices loudly. For this special episode, I invited Jennifer Block. She is a coordinator of the RISE program, which brings youth together around some of the biggest challenges they collectively face and give youth the opportunity to build something essential together. Oh my gosh. Okay. I joined RISE because I'm very passionate about helping my community. I've always been very involved and I've always wanted to help make a change. Change is pretty scary. Uh, you never know like where to start, uh, who to kind of like, communicate, um, where to reach out. I was just tired of feeling like I was stuck in a rut and RISE really just offered me the opportunity to just dive in head first. I joined RISE because I saw it as an opportunity to step out of my comfort zone and just experience like new perspectives. I felt like RISE would be a great opportunity for me to meet other young people and form a community and have a sense of belonging in a safe space. I joined RISE because RISE doesn't need you to have a lot of volunteering experience on your resume. Um, all I had is a lot of motivation and willingness to make change, and that was enough. I had just been of the mindset where I was kind of stuck in a rut. I just really needed, I felt the need to give back, but I didn't know how, and it just seemed like a really good way to do that. I saw an amazing opportunity to learn, create genuine connections, and build a community and also like help my community. What drew me to RISE is the fact that they're action-based. They don't just talk and talk and talk. They do and I love people who do. What, what I want to learn and what are my expectations, I don't have them. I think, I think if we just make one step further in life every day, that's huge. That's, that's my goal. So by the end of this experience, hopefully, I will be able to learn a lot of civic engagement skills and also have a community of like-minded people who will eventually like help me make a small impact. From this experience with RISE, I hope to learn like new skills to become, I guess, more of an equitable and inclusive leader and learn about new pockets in my community that I didn't know about before. I've already learned a lot, honestly, in my short time being here. Um, but I think that there's a lot of things of uh, value that um, people within my cohort have to teach me. Um, people that have different experiences than I've had, um, which I'm really looking forward to learning more about. I hope to learn more about the perspectives of others, learn more about communities I've not been involved with in the past, and learn more how to educate my peers. Learning to actively listen and communicate with people better. Um, I hope to learn how to manage a project in a democratic space. For me, the most important thing that I want to learn is to like challenge my ways of thinking currently and to think more critically about how I approach community outreach and do it in a way that's inclusive and accessible for everyone, in a way that maximizes the voices in my community and optimizes the resources that I have. Um, I feel that many young people feel disempowered uh, because they believe they cannot make a difference. We're going to inherit this world and I feel like we should have a say in how the world develops from here on out. Arise believes in the youth and gives us all the resources and the opportunities to make a change. I think it's so important to give youth and young adults the opportunity and you know freedom and place, safe place to create something. Know, create something that is really important to them. We need programs like RISE because there are still people suffering in every demographic, in every corner of every city. Change does not happen through apathy and change does not happen fast enough. We need more radical thinkers, we need progressive ideas, and we need volunteers to put their time and effort to try and solve the problems that past generations have ignored. Hello Jennifer, 
Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. So today we are going to talk about engaging young people in democracy, how young people can influence civic issues and what benefits they can bring to our city. So RISE successfully completed 44 projects. Can you tell us about one of the most significant and interesting in your opinion? Yeah, totally. Um, so they're all significant and important in their own way. Um, the one that I do want to talk about, it happened here in Winnipeg. It was the first uh, project that I was able to coordinate as a coordinator in Winnipeg. Um, it was called Happier Here and it launched in, ju in June 2022. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the project was called Happier Here. It was an initiative that makes finding safer spaces more accessible for youth in Winnipeg. And to do this, they created an interactive map where youth across Winnipeg could submit their safe spaces, add little tags um, indicating why that space was safe or why that space was um, especially accessible. Um, and those were all from user submissions. So users would say, this was a well-lit space. This was uh, wheelchair accessible. It was stroller accessible. It had gender neutral bathrooms. So those were all tags that people were adding. And then after those tags were added, they would be vetted by um, the team of volunteers who were running the project. And then they would be added onto the website. And this would allow other youth to look at the website and kind of search their terms, what they were looking for in a safe space, and hopefully find something in their own community. And to launch this website um, and to make it more known to the public, the volunteers for that project, they created a project launch. So in this project launch, they hosted a safe walk, a community cleanup, and then as a reward, they brought everybody lunch and they had a panel of speakers from the community. And now they were speaking about, you know, safer spaces, accessible spaces, what the city can do to, um, to improve all of these things. So it was just a really great project all around. Cool. It sounds like a really meaningful project. I think Christ is a unique initiative that gives you the opportunity to develop skills, learn community engagement and to work together to build something essential like this project. So how is uh, being surrounded by passionate, like-minded people impact personal growth? Yeah, so it definitely has a positive impact on professional and personal growth. And that's what we're really trying to do with the RISE program. We really focus on the community engagement and um, community connection aspect of um, professional and personal growth. So what we do in the program is we really emphasize networking, um, so meeting those community leaders, um, being exposed to different organizations and just connecting with other youth in Winnipeg because we know that that aspect of just social connection, something that we've all been missing during COVID, um, is just incredibly important to feel confident and feel comfortable being an individual working towards making change in your community. Cool. So they can support each other, inspire each other, motivate each other. Can you share with us a story how RISE started, what sparked that bright idea to bring youth together? Yeah, so RISE is actually part of a bigger organization called Apathy is Boring. Mm -hmm. And Apathy is Boring started as a national organization in 2004. RISE started in 2018, so way after the first conception of Apathy is Boring. Um, but yeah, we, this was introduced as a program that is supposed to be supporting um, young people to be engaged with democracy um, beyond the ballot box and kind of extending that engagement into the community between elections. Um, so we know that what happens between elections is just as important as voting. And through RISE, youth get the opportunity to engage and connect with their community through organizations, grassroots initiatives, and by com meeting community leaders. So something that we were kind of just mentioning before. Um, and now we're celebrating our five years. So RISE is going on to our 11th cohort. And um, yeah, the conception was in 2018. It's now 2022. So um, yeah, we're, we're in a big celebratory phase right now on all the successes that RISE was able to um, produce for Apathy is Boring. Do you have something special for your celebration? How is it going to be? Um, so I'm not too sure. I'm not on the planning um, aspect of it, but I do know there's a couple of videos that are coming out and a couple of social media things that are going to be announcing our five-year anniversary. Cool. And how many youth joined you since uh, 2018? 
Oh, that is a great question. So we do run um, in seven cities across Canada. And in each cohort, um, there's about nine to 10 ambassadors who are involved. And two cohorts happen per year in each city. So doing the map, which is something I can't do, um, you can just imagine that that is a lot of young yeah. people. And RISE reaches beyond just the volunteers within the program. Uh, they do community consultations. So that means that they're engaging with other youth in the community um, and getting their input on what community project they should be building in the program. So not only are we um, affecting the lives of people who are directly in our program, but we're also reaching out to so many youth um, across Canada just by having volunteers. How long have you been working in RISE and how did you come up on board? Yeah, so this is my favorite question, um, just because I've been with RISE for much longer than I've actually been working for the organization. Um, so in 2020, ooh, when was it? It was the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I think in 2021, my friend uh, from university, she was a part of the program, the cohort prior to my participation. And she said, you know, this is a great program. This is exactly something that you'd be into. Like you should really apply. Um, you learn so many skills, get so much experience and just get to meet a lot of cool people and make friends. And I was kind of like, oh, okay, like maybe. And then the last day of applications, I was like, okay, like, this is something that I'm actually going to do. So in January, 2021, I applied and I got accepted as an ambassador for that cohort. Um, and I met so many great people, created an amazing project um, called Time Out 204. It was a podcast that focused on gender and sports. So we really investigated the topic of how different uh, genders um, navigate the sports world and athletics and other type of athletic leisure and stuff like that. Um, and after my time as an ambassador, mm -hmm. I was invited on to be a mentor mm -hmm. for the program. So a mentor is a paid position that is... Um, that is able to support and assist the coordinator. So an ambassador, that is the first level of, you know, the first entry point into the program. That is a completely volunteer, completely voluntary. Um, but then you can go on to be a mentor if the coordinator um, invites you on. And the mentor really supports the ambassadors in their um, in their ideation, in their create, creation phase of creating the project. Um, so supporting the ambassadors through guiding them, giving them advice, supporting them just throughout the project um, as someone who has done it before. And then on the flip side, you're also supporting the coordinator. Um, so you are assisting the coordinator with all their duties, all the back end stuff, all the things that make RISE possible in Winnipeg. Um, and at the end of me being a mentor, I was so, so lucky and fortunate to have a coordinator who saw my skills, saw my potential and recommended me to be the new coordinator as she was, you know, just very conveniently leaving her role at Apathy is Boring. And I was very intimidated at that proposition, but I knew that my skills and experiences that I learned through being a RISE ambassador, being a mentor, um, that I was more than capable of doing this job. And yeah, so now the coordinator's role is just to basically run this program in Winnipeg, which is a huge step, a huge pivot from all the previous relationships I've had in the RISE program, but I am loving it every single day. My job is challenging, but also so, so rewarding. Cool, you did really well. So how did your life change when you joined RISE? Yeah, how did my life change when a I lot. joined RISE? <laughs> <laughs> that is a big question and there are so many there are so many answers I want to give but I know we only have a limited amount of time um but I really gained the confidence skills and experience um through this program that um has allowed me to make change in my community and has really allowed me to be a, to be somewhat of a leader in my community and that is something that I'm so so grateful for um well, RISE is an incredible program um, that impacts, you know, my life in a positive way and other youth lives. I think RISE allows young people, including myself, to realize that we have everything we need to be impactful and successful individuals in our personal lives and communities. Um, yeah, and this looks different from person to person, from community to community, and obviously city to city, uh, knowing that RISE runs nationally. Um, but we really just want to display how we can make a small impact or a big impact with small capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one thing that um, RISE has made me realize in my own life is that I don't need all the skills. I don't need all the funding. I don't need all the resources. Um, I can still make a big impact with what I have currently. 
Cool. So why do you think it is important to have an initiative like RISE in Canada? Yeah, so RISE is a really low barrier program. We invite youth to come as they are. Um, we invite youth specifically who are under-engaged um, so that they can become more engaged in Canada's political system and their own communities. So by doing this, we really emphasize that you don't need any previous skills, experience, knowledge, etc., to join the program. You just need to come as you are. We accept you as you are and everything that you need to learn to build a successful project and learn how to do it in the future outside of RISE. Those are all things that are taught within the program. So we really, really emphasize that you can come as you are. Um, and that's really important because a big aspect and barrier to professional development, volunteering and getting involved in these big initiatives is the lack of experience, the lack of knowledge. So many places are looking for previous experience. Yeah. So the fact that RISE is not looking for any of that um, really opens the door for so many youth who may have otherwise not have this opportunity. Are there times when participants lose their motivation? Maybe they get stuck in the projects and how to keep working when you are not feeling it? So we take a compassion first um, approach. So this means that we understand that capacities are changing, motivation changes, life circumstances change. We are not aiming to create, you know, corporate robots who just meet deadlines, mm -hmm. learn skills, and then we kind of just flush them out of the program. We are really looking to change the landscape of what professionality and what impact looks like in uh, communities. So we really focus on, um, again, creating that big impact with low capacity or low availability. Um, so we don't expect, you know, everybody to be working at 100% all the time. We just expect that, you know, you're working towards a common goal, have the passion and want to see some kind of change happen in your community. Cool. So what can you do as a youth to achieve a better future? Yeah, so there are so many things young people can do to achieve a better future. Um, I don't think there is one specific role that they can take on. I don't think there's one specific thing that they can do. It's going to look different from city to city, community to community, and individual to individual. But I think one thing that the RISE program does emphasize is community engagement, volunteering, and attending community events. These are all ways that just allow young people to have their voices heard, feel more engaged, make those social connections, um, but also allow leaders um, in the community, not only just organizational and community leaders, but political and provincial leaders, municipal leaders, all, you know, all types of leaders to see youth. Because if youth aren't being seen, then our voices aren't being heard. And that is, um, that's a problem. So I think just one of the best ways that they can have their voices heard is just show up. Do you believe that young people can create changes at a policy level? Absolutely. Yeah. Young people can create changes at a policy level. Um, and again, their role in that um, change is going to be different across the board. Some people might be more engaged with protests. Some people might be more engaged with emailing their political leaders individually. Some might go to the town hall meetings, etc. So there is no one way to make that change. But of course, any demographic, any age, any person has the possibility to make that change. Is there a stereotype about age? Do older individuals perceive the young generation are open-minded but foolish and not ready for making big changes and solve sticky problems? Great question. At Apathy is Boring, one of our main values is an intergenerational approach. So we really do understand that people from all walks of life do have an important role to play in creating change in young people becoming leaders in their community. Um, we know that the older generation um, has a lot of knowledge, experience, and expertise that they can share with the younger generation. And we've seen it happen time and time again throughout the program. And we've seen mm -hmm. young people accept that, not accept, but um, learn from that knowledge, learn from that experience, and let it drive their experiences and their methods moving forward and creating change. So to say that there's a stereotype, I'm not sure, but I do know that um, Apathy is Boring does hold this intergenerational approach and this collaborative approach um, across all ages, um, very near to, the, um, to our programs and how we operate as an organization.
Is there an appropriate age for becoming active and contributing citizen in Canada's democracy? There is not an appropriate age. I think all ages, um, all, all age levels are appropriate engaging Canada's democracy. Obviously, that's going to look differently. You can only vote when you're 18 in Canada. Um, you can only vote if you're a citizen in Canada. So those are two big barriers to becoming uh, traditionally engaged in Canada's democracy. But at Apathy is Boring, we know that young people are engaged in our democracy mm -hmm. um, in non-traditional methods. So we really hone in on that aspect. And that is one of the biggest um, takeaways from the RISE program is that you don't have to be, you don't have to be at the ballot box. You don't have to be, you know, in an election period to have a big impact on um, your community. And you don't have to, have, and, um, and you don't need that to have a big impact on elections and political leaders and political change. Those are all things that can happen in between elections. What is another way to make changes when you're not, 18 years old yeah so again through those non-traditional methods so by attending events by volunteering even just by having conversations with your peers your family members your acquaintances um, about issues that matter to you i think with young people social media is a big aspect of being engaged mm -hmm. a lot of conversations are happening on social media it's often where people hear the news first so i think just being informed um, having those conversations and getting involved in whatever way you can and whatever way is appropriate for you um, is the best way to make that change um, before you can actually vote. Do you agree that today's youth, this is a generation that will solve future crises, let countries, write policies, innovate and preserve or destroy democracies and systems of justice? All of those great things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think any generation, honestly, any generation, any demographic has that power to do um, any of those things. Whether this generation is going, you know, what direction this generation is going to go into, I think is unwritten. Um, the political landscape is is funky. We never know which direction it's going to go into. Um, but I do believe that youth, as well as just any demographic, has that power to make that change. What is the role of the youth in the development of the Winnipeg future? Yeah, so hmm, there is not one singular role that youth will have in developing the future of Winnipeg. Again, there are so many different roles, so many different responsibilities that a young person can take on in creating this change. Yeah, these roles are completely up to the individuals who are pursuing this change. Um, but some low barrier and accessible methods that youth can participate to help shape the future of Winnipeg is to just simply volunteer and show up. Where do you want to see Winnipeg in 10 years? Another great question. What I want to see from Winnipeg in 10 years and what I'm seeing right now is Winnipeg is growing in population and we are growing in density. Um, so I hope that in 10 years, Winnipeg will continue to be and continue to grow into a vibrant city that people want to call home. As the population grows, we will see programs, services, events, celebrations, and opportunities um, being more available to these growing, upcoming, and existing demographics. So from what, I, from what I'm experiencing right now, from what I'm seeing, and from what I can kind of predict and hope for Winnipeg in 10 years is that we can continue to grow into this very vibrant and um, diverse city where everybody feels supported um, and they want to call this place home. They feel safe calling this place home. They feel proud calling Winnipeg home. These are all things that I see in Winnipeg's future. Okay, and in your opinion, what does it mean active citizen? Yeah, so active citizen can mean a lot of things. So again, to a lot of different people, people have different capacities, different ways that they feel is most meaningful for them to engage in Canada's democracy. But as an active citizen, what RISE aims to do um, is to allow others to realize that they have power to make change in their, in their communities. So an active citizen is just somebody who realizes that they have that power to make that change and they feel empowered to do so. Okay, thank you. And what is the greatest lesson you learned from RISE? The greatest lesson that I learned from RISE is the importance of social connection. 
It is one of the biggest things that RISE aims to produce in the young people who volunteer for our program is that when you have social connection, people who you can reach out to, people in your community who you feel some type of belonging to, and people who you can reach out to, who you know will show up for you, who you know have the same passions, same interests, same goals for Winnipeg. Um, these are all things that um, the RISE program aims to do and aims to build in people. And it's something that's definitely built in me. And I'm so thankful for that lesson of, you know, don't, don't turn away from your community. Don't undermine what your community can do for you and don't undermine what you can do for your own community. Okay. What do you think uh, is the secret behind your organization's success? What makes RISE special and unique? Throughout my time as a mentor, as an ambassador, and as a coordinator, one thing that I really admire about our program and about our organization as a whole is that we are accountable to the youth that come through our program and who we're reaching out to. So we're very open to conversation, we're open to debate, we're open to creating solutions with youth um, to make our programming and our services better. We don't take a we know best approach. We really take a collaborative approach in providing our services and really want to meet youth where they are and provide services that are actually meaningful and relevant to their lives. So if I want to be a part of Next Cohort, how can I apply? Currently, RISE is recruiting for their 11th cohort. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting. You can apply right now before November 14th on our website at apathiesboarding.com. You can hit the little RISE tab and an apply now um, screen will show up and you can go through our online application. We do run two cohorts a year. So for right now, isn't the right time for you to apply. Just know that future um, opportunities will come up for you to apply for future cohorts. And if you want to follow our Instagram at ASB rise underscore win, um, you will also be um, kept up to date with any future applicants, future op opportunities, and all those fun things if you want to get involved. Thank you. And what can I expect of these cohorts? What activities do you have during this time? Yeah, so RISE is a 22-week program, and you get all the resources, skills, and funding that you need to build a community project. So what does this actually mean? So you're going to be going through an anti-oppression workshop. You're going to be going through a project management workshop, a budgeting workshop, a facilitation workshop. So just a bunch of trainings to really just build that foundational knowledge. You will also be... Um, be allowed to be an audience to a panel of community leaders. So these are people from different organizations, people who've led movements in Winnipeg, who um, started grassroots initiative, just people who are change makers in Winnipeg. We conduct a panel with them and they provide insights and guidance and advice to the current uh, cohort of volunteers so that they can better kind of understand, you know, what's the history of Winnipeg? What are the organizations that are out there doing the work so they can better um, they can come up with ideas on how to build a community project and what their community project will actually be. We also have a national retreat. So like I mentioned, RISE runs in seven cities across Canada. So we have a national retreat that usually takes place in Toronto or Montreal. Sometimes the city changes, but it's all expenses paid. Um, everything is included and you get to meet with everybody across the country who is in the RISE program, which is phenomenal. It is so much fun. And there you do a lot of workshops, you do a lot of training, and you just make a lot of connections and have fun. It's one big educational party. Um, but after that period, you go through a community consultation phase, which is um, when you're really starting to think about what your project is going to be. So in this phase, you're communicating with other youth who are not in the program, but who may have a say or may have a stake in the project that you're creating. So you're gaining their insights so you can better create a project that will benefit other youth in the community. So again, it's not saying I know best, it's that more collaborative approach. And then after that period, you actually get to build your project. So you get to do all the fun work, uh, you get to spend the funding that we provide to you, and you get to launch the project, and there's a big celebratory phase after that. So you get to celebrate all the hard work, you get to celebrate each other, and everything that you've done in the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think with this, we are going to conclude our today's discussion. Thank you, Jennifer, for being here with us today. It was nice to listen to you. Thank you for your answers. 
Thank you so much for having me. It was great being here. And I really appreciate just being able to talk about this program more. Thank you.